Welcome everybody to Anam Junk Reviews, The Oregon Trail, Director's Cut, where my dreams literally die. Oregon Trail Director's Cut is a retro text-based survival game that parodies the classic Oregon Trail. This simple and early Apple II game was released back in 1974, and it was meant to educate children about the horrors and harsh realities of being a 19th century pioneer in the United States. Dysentery, cholera, and more. You know, for kids! The game blew up and became a hit selling over 65 million copies. Oregon, not Oregon, is essentially a tribute and parody of the classic game, Dysentery and all. The Oregon Trail was originally a browser-based game that became a Facebook game and finally a full-fledged title. Director's Cut added more features and content over the Flash game and the developers, the men who wear many hats, created a successful Kickstarter page and released the title on August 12th for mobile devices, iOS, and Android. Later on, it was released here on Windows, Mac, and Linux on March 19th, 20. 13 and has a price tag of $4.99 and that price tag is a steal. Let's find out whether that's a deal or not ladies and gentlemen. The story is very straightforward, but I mean, that's not a shocker, right? It begins with you fighting hordes of zombies, and you get saved by Clements, who apparently used to be a priest, helps you find your party members from your cat to Shitler himself. Clements tells you that DC might have a shelter for survivors, and as soon as you set off, Clements somehow immediately manages to break his arm, at the same time contracts dysentery, and gets bit. Damn, God hates your existence, Clements! What the f*** did you do wrong to piss off God so much? Once you arrive at DC, unsurprisingly everything is destroyed, zombies roam streets, but a nearby radio warns the citizens to leave immediately because a nuclear strike will be commencing in a few hours. Clements suggests that he will look for my friends, you know, the ones he's never ever met or seen the faces of, just their names, while you gather supplies. Once your friends arrive and Clements, he warns you that he was bit on the road. He asks you to put him down and gives you his journal, which has everything he knows about survival. You shoot him in the head, and the journey to safe haven, which is ironically in Oregon, begins. Okay, so on the surface, the game has ancient graphics and sound effects. There's no going around about it. Does that mean they are terrible? Absolutely not. The graphics look like they were ripped right out of the Apple II computer. They are the most fitting and appropriate considering its history and source material. I for one find them retro and charming. The sound effects don't amount much more than beeps and clicks, but strangely enough, it works. They never felt annoying or limited whatsoever. I think you will find them to be quite hypnotizing and charming as well over time. Very rarely you will hear other than those simple effects. To be honest, I think the sounds and appearance of the title are excellent in their own right, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Tell me, do you like their presentation here? Comment below, I am very curious to see what you think of them. But I think that all of us can agree that the soundtrack, like most of my reviews is super awesome. Over 22 tracks of glorious retro 16-bit tracks with some modern instruments as well. Such a unique blend of spooky tracks that add to the sense of hopelessness in the world. And for the intense moments of energy and adrenaline, yep, those are here too. Ben Crossbones outdid himself. Here we have another title that has a soundtrack worth owning alone. Oregon Trail pretty much is exactly the same as its inspiration. It's about going from point A to point B and how you go on about doing so. It all depends on your method of play. The real charm of the title is the fact that you can control just about anything. From the very beginning of the campaign, you can select what you're going to pack up and how much of each supply item you're going to take for your journey ahead. This will be the only time you'll be able to directly choose what you're going to take so easily and virtually free. To forge on ahead, your station wagon needs fuel. You can set up the pacing of your vehicle to go fast, slow, or normal. The faster you go, the more damage your station will sustain. Once it is completely down, you will be stranded until you fix your car with scraps of metal. To use such metal, you need to use a good amount of it to raise your chances for a successful repair. If the repair fails, then you waste that number of metal and lose an hour of time in the process, in addition to the health of your party. Sure, you can use the repair shop in random towns to fix it, but it's not cheap. The game is all about managing your supplies wisely and having enough for them for unforeseen events such as tires popping, mufflers or batteries breaking down, to even having thieves steal your supplies or attempt to steal a party member. Then you shoot the f in the d You have to expect the unexpected and stay alert. You never know what's going to happen next. You might have to sneak or fight through a horde of zombies or deal with bandits who manage to see you drive through a town. You never know what's in the road ahead of you, so you must be prepared at all times. And that adds a sense of dread, shock, and fun. 
food is essential to keeping your crew alive and healthy. Feeding them plenty of food will cause them to lose less health over time, but obviously waste more ounces of food. If you run low, you can always go scavenging, and this is how the combat in this game mostly works. When you scavenge, depending on the time, at night it's usually more dangerous because walkers are running around. So wait until it's safer, or YOLO it, and look for supplies anyways, despite the number of zombies around. During this phase, a random number of items, usually two or three, will spawn. You can find lots of scrap metal or a few. All scavenging scenarios puts you in the map for about 30 seconds. You must find all that you can during that period and survive the zombies. If you get bit, your character will sustain an injury, and when he's injured, he can only be healed with medkits, and those are always expensive. You cannot heal like the rest of the group by resting. And also remember that resting in cities heals you most slightly more than resting in the wild. Remember that you can only find food, scrap metal, and money while scavenging. Nothing else can be found besides that. The other way to obtain the other supplies you cannot find would be by trading with random people or buying them from shops. All towns have either a trainer who can train your party leader, cool abilities like being able to carry extra food, bullets shoot faster, or you have a faster walking speed, and more. You only have three though. After that, you have to replace one of the abilities. If an auto shop is present, you can upgrade your car and modify it with cool abilities. All towns usually have some sort of missions like take out the zombies, retrieve a box, or deal with bandits. Their difficulty varies, but the easiest one is the box retrieve. You just walk out to the right and avoid zombies. I never lose that one, really. While the bandits one is the worst. Having to shoot so many of them with these controls is terrible. You aim by moving the cursor to the line of sight and then pull back. It may not sound so bad, but trying to win on these firefights is just too tedious. I seriously spent so many bullets just trying to get the rewards, but I ended up using more ammo during the damn fight, so it was pointless. Avoid these unless you are an ammo G god. The survival of your companions is important, but not as important as they should be. Let me explain. Having nearly all of them dead doesn't affect the game in any way that I noticed. You can beat the entirety of the campaign with just one person. The only time I can think that they will really help is in the ending. Other than that, not really. What also is a pain is the fact that, sure, you may be able to name your party, but you cannot customize them in any way. They all look the same when you kill them or interact with them. The only time they don't is during a cutscene or near the damn campfire. Even the girls look like blonde dudes with sweaters when they get shot. They all look the same regardless of gender. It's actually kind of funny, but not in a positive way. What I really like though is making difficult decisions. If a party member gets bit, they have a chance of turning into a zombie and endangering you and the rest of your crew. So if they ever starve or get really sick, you might have to put them down. But not all events are the same. You always have the choice of investigating or not. In this case, I did. And here's what happened. A small child steals food from the back of my car, sees me and starts running. I can let him go or chase him. I chase him. He struggles to run and he trips. And now I stand above him. I have the choice of reprimanding him, punishing him, or helping him up. I decide to rough him up. My character beats him up until the child has no fight left in him. I take my food and return to the car. After all, it's either me or him. Now that choice was extremely difficult, despite it being a simple text-based answer. It doesn't matter. I kept thinking back to this choice. Even a few days later after playing this, that moment was just so powerful. That feeling of guilt, it's very impressive. Nay, I applaud the game for doing this. This is not something that most games make me do, ever, no matter which game. So it's very impressive that this game has made me do that and makes me think about this choice from time to time. If that's not an excellent choice system, then I do not know what one is. Once you complete the campaign, you unlock Endless Mode. And this mode is awesome. Not only that, you also unlock skulls, a la Halo. By doing certain tasks, you unlock more and more skulls and you gain special loadouts and game modifiers. For example, like having all members start out with infections, but giving you more points in the Endless Mode. And as the name suggests, you go on forever with a set amount of starting equipment, depending on your loadout. As you travel to next town and the next, the distance between each town increases, as well as having scavengers eventually just giving you one item per run rather than two or three, and eventually you will die. The more members you have alive, the more points you're going to get, and depending on the modifiers, you can always increase or decrease points depending on the modifier itself. And as soon as you die, you can tweet your score and then start all over and do it again with a different loadout. It's really addicting. You want to get all the skulls and see all the possible loadouts and see how far you can make it. Not to mention there's plenty of achievements to do. So there's just so much content for a measly $4.99. I just love it. Oregon Trail is a unique game of a parody slash tribute done extremely well. There is really no game like Oregon Trail besides Oregon Trail. It's amazing how fantastic everything turned out to be using a formula back from decades ago and adding so much more content on top, proving this title and its spiritual predecessor are timeless. The journey to safe haven is extremely difficult 
difficult and there is so much to go on chance, but you can usually only be harmed depending on how prepared you are for the unforeseen. When those life or death situations come around, the weight of the consequences really bear down on you and make you think hard and learn as well. A typical playthrough of the campaign can take as little as one and a half hours to three hours or more, but it doesn't feel like a short one whatsoever because you go through so much crap and so many ordeals during that time that it feels like a great accomplishment indeed. Managing equipment, upgrading your car, deciding the rationing and pacing of the station wagon are all factors that can make or break your playthrough. The game rarely feels cheap as most of what happens is your fault in some way. While I wish that you could customize party members, change guns, have some sort of aiming system that's not so picky, Oregon Trails offers an entirely unique experience unlike any other any game will give you. Naming your characters ridiculous names or people or celebrities is fun, and the same amount of extra content is perfect. You seriously can't go wrong for $4.99. You can get plenty of dozens of hours worth of content in this game. Even if the price was $9.99, that would still be worth it. I feel like we're robbing them at that low price. With all the positives vastly outweighing the few negatives, I have decided to deem Oregon Trail Director's Cut for the day. Insta-buy. You just cannot go wrong buying this game, and I am not the only one to think so. Out of 1,696 reviews, the game still holds up with an 88%. I actually deem it a little bit higher than that, but again, this time there's not much differences. And that's fine by me. Thank you all, seriously, thank you all for watching this. I am really having fun making these. I hope you all have fun watching these. I must give you my sincere thanks for sticking by here. If you want to make my day, you should comment below and give me feedback on what you thought of the game, or what you thought of my review, and so on. And if you really want to make my day even more, subscribe. You can catch all these reviews when they're nice and fresh and hot. If not, you can always click here for my last review of XCOM Enemy Within, or the one before that, which was Jamestown. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for my next video. This is Random. Junk, signing off.